and uh, ex principal of shiliguri bet college uh, sir has uh, has uh, does have a did have a phd in physics and he has numerous publications and projects to his credit in this area of research sir was associated with the west bengal university of teachers training education planning and administration in the capacity of registrar and during his tenure he did numerous reforms for the welfare of the teachers training university so again a warm welcome to you sir and uh, we are extremely happy and honored to have you here over to you sir thank you thank you madam wow. wow. thank you words for me i request i request <laughs> everyone to <laughs> keep yourself mute and the way in the beginning yeah. i convey my regards to the honorable chancellor to the honorable vice chancellor to the honorable pro vice chancellors all the honorable members of the organizing committee and the advisory committee all other stakeholders of the bright young university adamas university and last but the most the learned speakers and the participants i congratulate all concerned for organizing this international workshop on interdisciplinary applications and innovations in research methodology and thank everybody for inviting me here i congratulate adamus university for creating the center for education research and development and it is a great delight to see a person of the department of education dr prakritha bishas a very learned and able leader in the area as the coordinator of this center my reflections today revolve around this point role of the department of education although the reflections may be useful for other de departments as well in the poster i was delighted and amazed to see that i am really an odd man and that is the reason i am so happy i am the only one old man in the galaxy of young builders of knowledge and institutions so okay i start my words and again i repeat these are basically reflections on my experience and way of reacting to those i am no specialist in the discipline of education so i will not uh, try in that way my first observation it was uh, coming to my mind when i was registered in the university and these days in the days of crisis the observations the feelings they are coming stronger that is in the coming days the department of education is going to play a significant role in university in any university especially the research part of that university because managing human behavior without hampering freedom i repeat managing human behavior whenever we 
to think of managing human behavior uh, the danger of ham hampering freedom comes in so without hampering freedom one of the most important tool for combating with the present and incoming crisis and all of you understand this is a big challenge managing human behavior one side and without hampering freedom on the other side these two sides are uh, competing but we will have to sit together for a uh, uh, happy conciliation of these two ideas if a then if a department of education wants to play this role in my opinion it must come out of its well defined disciplinary role and set examples for others fortunately the discipline of education has an advantageous position because the over the ages who contributed to education they are from multi discipline and it should that means the department of education should take an initiative in collaboration at this moment i can imagine three types of collaboration number one in interdisciplinary collaboration the teachers and scholars of the department of education and even the students should attend the seminars and if possible some of the classes of other departments while attending for example a p in the defense seminar of science one may not understand the content but one should participate with the eye of an educationist and see how, how they are communicating what the educational challenges there are note down those observation i will name a great physicist of indian origin subramanyam chandra shekhar everybody knows him by the uh, name of black hole a great theoretician in his name in the university of chicago there is a chair at present he is a nobel laureate he used to do these things almost regularly even in his ripe ages he used to attend the classes of other disciplines number 2 invite teachers scholars and even students to the depart of other disciplines to the department of education and listen what they are thinking about education while inviting uh, i uh, as registrar i have experience for example whenever someone invites a professor of science department he says no no i am not a man of education i cannot say anything i tell you everybody on earth especially those who 
who are involved with any kind of education are thinking and want to say about want to say something about education but for several reasons they generate reservation and they do not want to come invite them listen them and note down whatever they say in their form not do not try to translate those in the language of educational and education discipline it is it would be a nice uh, thing uh, for any department of education to have its own journal publish all those observations in those journals gradually you may see that departments coming closer a kind of rapport is being formed and they are sharing i repeat as the registrar i observe the departments departmental colleagues they share many kinds of friendship but they fail to share their disciplinary views number 2 collaboration in the form of inter method sometimes i uh, uh, come to the observation no no this is the method of education in research this is the method of physics ultimately in the coming days these differences have, differences have to go because originally there was no difference before the uh, formation of physics as a distinguished discipline or education as a discipline so some kind of understanding should be there i recall one of my situation one of my anecdote in my research life i basically i did my phd in mathematical physics so what we did we observed some physical situation we translated those to mathematical equations we solved those equations got the solutions and then again retranslated them to physical situation but you know in mathematics even there are several methods of approaching a problem and all the methods are not compatible with all the physical situations my professor one day i was rather confused i asked him sir i followed this method how do i be sure that this method is compatible with this situation sir said my boy try to get a solution and then match the solution with your original equation if those two become compatible if the solution satisfies your problem then don't bother about the method you have followed the ultimately in research you have a problem situation and at the end you must have a solution and that solution must be compatible with the your original situation or that is represented in the form of equation in 
educational research is also what i feel whatever observation we are getting whatever solutions we are getting that must be compatible with the problem situation where from we start beyond all the methods this must be uh, come into practice in these five days i i on fifth that uh, on i could not listen to all the uh, lectures uh, uh, on monday immediately but i observed them through uh, links later on one point came in to uh, you will remember that responsible research so far as i remember that it should be useful to to your national situation local problem or any someone's problem it has to solve so for that you will have to take examples of the methodologies of other disciplines and by methodology i mean therefore on the past situation i told you attend the lecture initially you will not understand but, but however you will come into discussion come into sharing how do they address a problem how do they get solution how they get frustrated how they overcome those frustration and the last third collaboration i tell you this is among our colleagues for example i will tell you i started my career as a school teacher then i served as a teacher educator and lastly in administration in teacher education colleges and university of teacher education but for of the school teachers from uh, we used to even in the uh, uh, national level institutions we invite school teachers or who are practicing in the classroom situation and train them good uh, research methodology good teaching methodology all like that but we never listen to them as colleagues research colleagues i want to say say that this this is my experience this is the reason that we do not get reliable data from the classroom situation and at the end we do not be able to verify our observation in the classroom situation it is my imagination i cherish i know that this is the very very difficult uh, imagination from kg to pg we all are teachers we all are researchers i know the first question will come what will have to will, will be the pay structure will those be equivalent what would be the qualification structure how they will be equivalent as i told you i served as a school teacher i served as a um, uh, 
teacher in a college of teacher education also if i can remember my sentiments i get honored if someone listens to me if someone listens to me in such a way that this is important this is reliable data in the uh, some important academic activity can we imagine a situation that a professor or a teacher education in is attending a class where a teacher of kg level primary level is taking the class she is elaborating her situation how she manages the situation and the professor of teacher education is learning from that class with these three uh, reflections on collaboration i feel that the department of teacher education department of education will be able to take the seat of leadership and also there is no way out because in the incoming days for example now the greatest challenge okay the challenge is with vaccine challenges with medicine challenges with oxygen challenges with everything but we are observing that the challenge we are not being able to solve on this day also so that is education and without the education i repeat what where i started that we cannot change the behavior of people and at the same time keeping their freedom as it is and unless we do that unless we can do that all kinds of measures are going to be insufficient with this words i will conclude but before that i will thank again pratita ma'am who almost forced me as her brother elder brother to come on this very learned platform and share a few words thank you all thank you again ma'am i have concluded thank you very much sir for uh, summarizing a very very important issue in such a nice way actually you know you uh, focused on some some of the very very important issues which uh, you know we being the teachers we should be very very careful about we should pay our attention to and it's very important lesson for the students of uh, this generation as well so thank you again very much uh, you know we are really grateful to you for uh, you know uh, you know ac accepting this invitation and joining us today thank thank, thank you, you again sir okay uh, so uh, moving on to our uh, next session we have with us uh, mr m m shamim uh shamim sir are you there yes ma'am i am here yeah okay okay so uh, shamim sir is here shamim sir is a senior lecturer department of english southeastern university of sri lanka and uh, sir is also a research scholar of uh, university of utara malaysia so i am requesting sir to say a few words on behalf of uh, the university of utara malaysia okay thank you, thank you. the honorable vice chancellor deputy vice chancellor of faram university dr navin dayas professor ujjwal k chaudhry and professor jitendra 
के पांडे एंड डिस्ट्रिक्ट गेस्ट प्रोफेसर चांदा हु वर द प्रीवियस स्पीकर एंड डॉक्टर प्रतिता बिस्वा एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर हेड ऑफ एजुकेशन एंड डॉक्टर सुमोना दत्ता एंड अदर डिस्टिंग्विश्ड गेस्ट रिसर्चर्स एकेडमिक्स लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन माय डियर ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स गुड आफ्टरनून वनकम नमस्ते नमस्ते एंड अस्सलाम वालेकुम let me introduce my self because now the head asked me to just introduce myself i am samim i am a senior lecturer from southeastern university of sri lanka which is in the eastern part of sri lanka and phd scholar from uum malaysia then at the outset i would like to say a very big thank to honorable vice chancellor adam university dean uh, research and development dr pratita biswa who has organized everything and coordinated with me and sumona data and all the organizing okay. for inviting is there is a noise no okay and all the organizing committee for inviting me as a part of this international workshop on interdisciplinary applications and innovation in research methodology organized by center for education research and um, development adam university we all know that the main role of the university is not only the teaching and dissemination of knowledge but the research is one of the prime duties of universities now the research culture is not only for university uh, but or colleges because most of the people say that you know the this is research is only for university it's a university culture now the teachers also now they involve in um, action research now now they have to find their own solution for their own classroom problems so the importance of research is uh, for teachers those who involve in teaching is very very important but the university should serve as a bridge between the local and the global that is the thing it means university should play an important role in knowledge creation and local context and contribute to the global science so i don't want to waste you most of your time but anyway just let me talk about some few words about the uh, workshop uh, you know but i have observed really i participated in the session and totally enjoyed and learned many aspects of life as lifelong learner as a lifelong learner i i learned many aspects from the different speakers the teachers means lifelong learner we should we, we always keep in our mind that not only the teachers everyone is lifelong learner but we need to update our knowledge every day in order to facilitate for our students the content of the workshop was relevant and well presented they were totally amazing we enjoyed very enjoyable and good uh, good information now we gathered i was really happy that even with having 23 of experiences in teaching and research i learned a lot from this workshop very informative session i think it exceeded the participants expectation as well the organizers have done a awesome work it was very good opportunity to collaborate with your university and such a galaxy of academics once again let me thank the vice chancellor and all the organizing committee for organizing such a great academic session hope i can in future we can collaborate with you and do more uh, research activities thank you very much and thank you very much one and all thank you thank you very much uh, shamim sir for uh, you know summarizing the things uh, in a very nice way thank you again moving on to our next session we have with us our uh, dean uh, research and development at adams university uh, dr momita mukherjee ma'am ma'am can you hear me Yes, you are audible. Okay, 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 ma'am. So it's really a pleasure that uh, ma'am could actually join us in spite of several uh, other engagements. So just to very briefly introduce ma'am, uh, Professor Dr. Momita Mukherjee is an alumni of uh, Presidency College and U Calcutta University. She worked at uh, DRTO as a senior research uh, fellow and in continuation to the postdoctoral research associate. Uh, under DRTO Ministry of Defence Government of India she was a visiting scientist at INEX Newcastle University UK she will be present today here and uh, my heartfelt uh, thanks to the organizer for 
arranging such a good uh, and very informative session on research and innovation, which is very important from faculty aspect as well as from student aspect, I believe. So if I want to say something, I will share uh, the research and development activities that presently we are uh, conducting at Adamos University. Now Adamos University started its journey, as you know, in 2015. And we are conducting uh, such as a most important part of university activities. And we have established a separate research unit, R&D unit for that. Not only uh, basic research, we are giving uh, emphasis, especially on the development, product development, so that we can, um, uh, which, which is patentable. Now, as far as research uh, publication and research domains are concerned, we are doing research in various groups and uh, that is uh, distributed in different uh, units uh, of uh, in different schools. We have uh, nine schools presently, one school is Line of Engineering and Technology, School of Education, School of Law and Justice, uh, and uh, School of Pharmaceutical Technology, School of Life Science and Biotechnology, and School of Business and Economics. So these are nine schools that Presently, uh, at school level, we are conducting research activities. And to give special emphasis on in, uh, in particular areas of research, recently we have established 10 research center. And 10 research center, uh, as you know, the purpose of the establishment of the research center is to give uh, importance in a very specialized domain. First research center that presently we are doing uh, work in uh, center for high-end computing and research. Now in broad sense, this center uh, activities include major part of the research activities that is going in different schools of the university, especially under science, engineering, pharmacy, bioscience stream. And this all include uh, in all, all uh, computation facilities, high-end computation, uh, software, uh, high-end computation facilities are available in the field of nanoscience, bio, MEMS, bio nanotechnology, medical electronics, drug design, etc. So another school of uh, center for research that we established, we have established and continuing work is Shubhash Mukhobadha Center for Stem Cell Biology and Regenerative Medicine. And our aim or uh, the purpose or the uh, scope of this center uh, research uh, in this center is to use stem cell science and research to better understand human disease and to develop novel cell-based therapies for some of them through translation and research. So third center uh, where research work is particularly carrying out is in the field of uh, logistic and supply chain management. Now this is to promote executive learning, research and consultancy uh, in the field of logistic and supply chain management. This center uh, is providing an environment uh, for facilitating fresh logistic and supply chain management practice based on new learning and new knowledge acquired. So another research center uh, in this allied field is a research a center for research in business analytics. So, uh, the scope of this unit uh, includes high standard of business analytics study and, and research. Uh, then Center for Human Health and Wellness. Uh, this center is continuing uh, its research activity in line of national health mission in HM. All of we know that it's very important mission of India. And we have established our research center in this direction only the country's flagship health system uh, to strengthening this program. Now, this includes research in the field of mental, psychological, and physical well-being, yoga therapy, life science, psychology, and several other departments they have taken part in its development and activities. Another center, uh, center for research in media convergence. So media convergence, as all of we know, we have a school of media and this center is associated with that. 
uh, this convergence is all about integration interoperability of computing network then information technology digital form of information those are inherently adaptable and delivered via intelligent platform application and devices this trust areas of research this is actually this are the activities that presently are carried out under this center now another very important research center that is uh, that we have established and continuing work uh, in this field is the center for research in climate change and environmental laws this this research center focuses on an improved understanding of climate development and environmental challenges which is very important nowadays and pathway to improve outcome through defining key areas so school of law department of geography and allied departments they are actively uh, taking part in its operation and functionalities another very important center in association with school of education is uh, has, has been established and uh, we are working in this field is center for education research and development the center is emphasizing on uh, and promoting comparative research innovation and key indicators exploring forward looking and innovative approaches uh, to education and learning and facilitating bridges it facilitates bridge between educational research innovation and policy development so another research center center for material research this is to work as it, this is actually interdisciplinary r and d unit uh, for fundamental and applied research in the field of material science its synthesis characterization design study and growth so it is mainly associated with the activities of science and engineering people mostly another center we have established on the parthagosh center for leadership the aim is to develop uh, aim is to uh, train person for uh, leader of uh, coming days so and uh, last but not the least the center for water and air analysis that is the purpose of this center is to work in the field of uh, water analysis synthesis in the and uh, characterization uh, activities the associated laboratories that we have uh, established already we have very uh, cutting edge laboratories uh, in this uh, university we have established in five years only several research projects funded research project by government of india uh, we are very uh, glad to announce that uh, presently uh, nearly 4 crores of research funding we have obtained from several uh, government sector department of science and technology defense research and development organization science and engineering research board and others uh, industry frontline in, in industries they have uh, kept faith upon us by providing by sanctioning a huge amount of research fund for the activities research activities so Uh, this is uh, all activities that we are going uh, presently we have published uh, if you uh, from the mhrd data it is reflected that 837 is the total publication till date we have and amongst that uh, 495 are in reputed international journal and with citation globally others are conference uh, scopus index conference proceedings and uh, elsevier springer level book chapters so we are happy that we are progressing uh, with a sharp curve in uh, particularly in 2021 year uh, with uh, various publication in the field of um, uh, advancement of uh, the research in covid 19 its uh, detection methodology vaccine and uh, what are the pathological uh, problem that the, our researchers have already addressed and we got citation that from uh, different parts of the world so we are uh, proud for that and our research uh, professor uh, from our university have scored position in the um, top 2% um, research scientist from in uh, world that was ranked by uh, stanford university and uh, professor uh, chiranjeev chakraborty from our 
university took position in that prestigious platform. So these are uh, we 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 have already uh, five all, all total twenty seven uh, patents filed uh, by the faculty members of the university and from university. So in this way we are progressing, and uh, I hope in coming days Adamas University will be able to get a very prominent, very important position, particularly in the field of R&D sector. And uh, all scientists and researchers, faculty members, they are really devoting themselves and uh, very much involved in the, uh, gener in, in the development activities in various domain of research field. So with this, I am concluding today and I hope a great success of your program. Uh, thank you, madam. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mamita Mukherjee for uh, actually highlighting the research activities of our university. And I hope uh, you know, uh, all the participants who are here are able to understand how we are trying to all the research centers uh, that are here in our university, we are trying to make a mark in the uh, different areas of research, actually. So th thank you again very much. Uh, thank you, ma'am. And international collaboration yes. uh, are present today uh, for their uh, involvement. We will be very happy to collaborate with them, uh, particularly in the field of research center that we have established. We will be very happy to do uh, collaborative research with different uh, researchers yes. who have participated. Okay, madam. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Will. Thank definitely. You. Thank you. We are actually looking forward to that. Thank you very much, ma'am, for highlighting this. Okay, so in this session, we are also joined by uh, our uh, Pro Vice Chancellor, uh, Academic Affairs Professor Dr. Navin Das, sir. Uh, sir, uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sir, uh, a very well, very warm welcome to you. Uh, sir is uh, the Vice Chancellor, Academic Affairs of Adamas University and also the Dean School of Business and Economics, Adamas University. So just to give a brief introduction to Sir uh, before handing over the mic to him, uh, Professor Dr. Navindas uh, did his BTA from Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur. PGDM in Operations and Management from IIM Calcutta and PhD from National Law University Jodhpur in Management. He had been associated with NSHM Business School, Kolkata, Indian School of Business, uh, Evernon uh, in Education Limited, ICFI Business School, IBS Business School, ICM Center for Management Research. He had volunteered for experiences as a honorary advisory board member of Rights Education, member corporate advisory board education of Anvil Educational Research and Consultancy. Sir had been, has been the editorial board member of several international journal, uh, specifically for new classical research and development in management. He has, his uh, special interest and expertise lies in the holistic development of managerial manpower without compromising on the basic tenets of humanity and generic goodness of the self. Uh, a book lover uh, in his own uh, rights, uh, sir, uh, it's a, we are really happy to, the, you know, to have you here, sir. So over to you, sir, please, if you can please share your words. <coughs> Ma'am, I know <clears throat> at the fag end of the program, it has been a long journey for all the participants. So the mind is not, I'm sure, at a stage where you can accept something new. So uh, I think what I'm going to do is, um, as usual, I'm not going to give you any new theory or any new uh, knowledge. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to sum up, I'm sure, all the uh, dignitaries and all, all my learned colleagues who have been uh, dealing with this subject of research uh, in their own way, looking at research from multiple perspectives. And that brings me to the topic, actually. Looking at things from multiple perspectives is, I think, uh, uh, the moot point today. <clears throat> they say that wise men um, are never, ever 
confident and the fools are so confident that they can they can have a view on everything so i think as we go along on our research path more and more we will become more and more confused we will become more and more uncertain and we will become more and more outward and inward looking <clears throat> it's very normal multidisciplinarity in our research i think to my mind multidisciplinarity in research is perhaps the most important aspect of any research if it has to have the relevance because remember though all of our subjects are uh, unitary subjects for example i have been taught engineering i have been taught management uh, sumona ma'am has been taught psychology prarthita ma'am is an education uh, professional and uh, uh, just the previous speaker of mine momita ma'am has done physics in her life but remember the problems that we face in life they don't come in neat packages of physics chemistry mathematics psychology or management they come to us as a as a conglomerate of subjects they come to us as a package and we have to solve those problems research if it is divorced from relevance any amount of rigor is meaningless and that brings me to the to the issue of multidisciplinarity unless and until we look at research from multiple perspectives research can never be relevant let's take two examples all of us <clears throat> we are besieged with this problem today of uh, the of the virus and uh, epidemiologists are busy doing their research now think about it epidemiology today modern epi epidemiology is nothing but a combination of areas that we thought had very little to do with epidemiology for example social behavior today we have all understood that social behavior is one of the most important factor uh, for the spread of the virus biostatistics 10 years 15 years ago people thought that biostatistics uh, uh, was not also a field of study and again statistics and biology together how could it be um, how could how could that be possible but today we know that epidemiologists are also biostatisticians anyway they are clinical researchers biology and molecular uh, sciences are anyway a part of epidemiology but look at those new areas which have come in into epidemiology social behavior biostatistics well that is one area of natural science if i may say so health sciences let's take another example of uh, of pure science or pure technology let's talk about computer music we are all almost addicted to to to, to our spotify and uh, to our saban.com computer music to my mind would not have been possible if researchers would not have gone beyond their periphery of music uh, and the engineering behind the music delivery i'm sure researchers in psychology particularly to, to to look at the aspects of psychomusicology or say for example computer science as to how they use programming to bring me that particular music when i want it or say digital signal technology which is again a part of physics i think today no field can be looked at as a pristine field bereft of others and researchers the moment they become alert to this multidisciplinarity i think research relevance goes up multifold and that's why they become more and more relevant and useful to humanity because remember every discipline and this is for my uh, young researchers who have joined uh, this program obviously not to my colleagues they are already learned but to the young young researchers i would say that remember every discipline has two aspects the epistemology part of it which is the way of thinking in common parlance epist 
epistemology is the way of thinking and it also has a sociology part of it think about it epistemology and sociology together make a discipline sociology is the way of working how does the field work for you and me in our daily lives that makes a discipline and unless and until our research touches upon both of these research would neither be relevant nor would have sufficient rigor it would remain somewhere in the libraries for one or two citations throughout its life to sum up the question is how does one become interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary in approach in one's research well there are many many factors there are many qualities but just uh, to remind the participants today and we remind all of us these are things that we should be reminded of almost on a regular basis we have to keep our curiosity high the first factor is of curiosity the open mindedness of accepting somebody else's field as our own unless and until i transgress from my field and step into others with an open mind with a learning mind multidisciplinarity or interdisciplinarity and i'm sure in one of the sessions uh, in these days the difference must have been told to you we cannot have these unless and until we are open minded we have to also be risk taking in our own way it's very comfortable to be in our own field and feel that everything is hunky dory it's risky to get into another field particularly a new emerging field and integrate it with our own field obviously it also needs a lot of humility humility is required because when you step into another new field unless and until you are humble to first unlearn what you thought you learned about that or you had already learned you will not get in get even a step forward and finally like any any endeavor including research hard work always pays off because remember you are getting into new areas where the gratification might be delayed why is it that we feel very comfortable being in our being in our own research areas and go deep and deep and deep is basically because first and foremost it's easier to go deeper into my own area but most importantly uh it doesn't need a lot of hard work it doesn't need humility it doesn't need curiosity it doesn't need open mindedness and finally it doesn't need taking risk so just to uh end my small address look at an area like say behavioral finance it was an unheard of field even perhaps uh, 10 years ago two areas behavioral science which is in the domain of psychology and finance which is in the domain of hardcore business and management how could they marry together and become such a widely used field today behavioral finance is an example unless and until psychologists and management professionals took all the steps to know each other and then marry each other off and have a peaceful life thereafter a new field would not have emerged as we rightly say and many of our uh, older generation researchers used to say that new knowledge always gets uh, developed at the just a position of fields two areas two fields look at the areas where they are meeting perhaps new knowledge resides there so thank you very much ma'am for giving me this opportunity and wishing all the young researchers all the very best for an insightful relevant obviously rigorous multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary research thank you very much thank you very much sir for this uh, extremely interesting and insightful uh, presentation and uh, you know we thoroughly enjoyed your uh, very short address although it was a very short but it's a very very you know sharp and very very effective uh, message for all our participants who joined us today so thank you again
Okay, uh, moving on to our next session, uh, we are also joined, we are extremely privileged, we are also joined by our uh, Pro Vice Chancellor, Public Relations and Media Affairs at Amos University, Professor Ujwal Kumar Chaudhary. Uh, a very warm welcome to you, sir. Okay, so just uh, hand, before handing over the mic to sir, I would like to introduce you, sir, sir in a very, uh, you know, very briefly, basically. So Professor Ujwal Kumar Chaudhary is a leading media and communication academic of India, having been earlier the Dean of Media of Symbiosis Pune and Amity Mumbai University, Whistling Goods International Mumbai and Pearl Academy of Delhi and Mumbai. He is known for his convergent approach to media education, starting from an integrated, broad base, leading to focused specialization at the top. He is a known face in TV studio debates and a regular writer in Indian media. He had earlier been employed with uh, Business India TV, Z News, Times of India Group, WHO Media, and others. He is experienced in media education, writing, editing, public speaking and civil society uh, that he can simplify complex ideas into very simple workable action plans. He moves with incredible speed and works across domains with dexterity and expertise. He's a very hardworking person, a very fun loving innovator who brings new energy to every project he takes on. Uh, an extremely good human being and an excellent leader we are really privileged that uh, you have joined us thank today, you. sir. Over to you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, madam. And thank you, everyone who is present there. Um, I would uh, like to make a PowerPoint presentation as well. So if you can give, give me the screen share, I think I can, I'll be able to do that. Yes, I've got it. Uh, yes. Just a minute, let me make it full screen. Yes, you are for the last one week focusing on research and research for the sake of applied uh, you know, knowledge, research for the sake of fundamental knowledge, research for academic purposes like PhD and postdoctoral, research for writing papers, all of these for the last seven days. Let me take your attention for the next 15 minutes Search for entering because one of the primary reasons that we exist is mentoring and teaching. So, allow me in the given in the new situation that we are in, particularly in the context of um, in the context of pandemic and the post pandemic times, can we how can we look at mentoring and learning in a new blended way and how can research help there? I believe my uh, my pop my presentation is visible yes, to all, sir. right? Okay. So uh, the first quick point, I mean, there's limited time, so I'll go a little fast. And this is very simple. We were teachers 5, 10, 15 years ago. We were teachers like Sage on the stage. We had the last word on the syllabus and on evaluation of our uh, learners or our students at the time. Introduced, we introduced the topic in a class and we interpret it. Classroom teaching and assessing answer scripts was the only word that we had. Chalk and talk was the approach. And we focused on a structured syllabus. In the new normal, in the new norm, we are moving to a different scenario. This scenario is yet to develop in the full fledged, in a full fledged manner. But by next three to four years, we shall be a friend, guide, motivator, which many of us have been, but in a new way. We create proprietary learning resources. I'll explain that. We aggregate learning resources and then share. We, the mentorship we do is inside and beyond the classroom. Adept in multiple evaluation system and not the traditional one. We begin with a syllabus, a structured syllabus of the university and move on to an organic learning. I'll explain that. Ed tech, com tech savvy. That's another challenge and many Elderly people, and I, I would like to take this because I'm on the wrong side of 50s. Many elderly people have tough time now to actually become a tech, com tech savvy. But that's the new age mentor. High on emotional intelligence and human touch because half the time you'll be looking at the screen, just like I'm looking at the screen, look, look uh, seeing the faces of my colleagues and many others. 
and speaking. So you really need to have a huge amount of emotional intelligence to maintain the sense of humor and the sense of touch, you know, human touch. So teachers to mentors is the first paradigm shift. Similarly, students to learners. Students study in classroom and from teachers. They study from books, from teachers, and occasionally search in the internet. They study for exams, for marks, for grades, for degrees, and studies with a structured syllabus. Rarely you will find a student go beyond the given syllabus. Even the given syllabus is tough for them to finish. And they study in a competitive environment. Every time they're being told you are in competition. And we are moving on to a new paradigm and that's of learners. And learners study in class from mentors and from peers alike. Mentors, teachers turn into mentors. And friends, the classmates turn into peers. Study outside the class also from internet and from experiences, experiential learning and digital learning. Study for life and application where marks exams are a byproduct and not the product. Product is the life. Self-study, learning to learn because whatever you learn, now Sumana teaches psychology. What she'll be teaching to her master students seven years down the line, six years down the line, many of these theories she will only refute in her own articles because knowledge has gone ahead. Technologies change. I, I, I don't know if you remember there was COBOL, there was Java, there was C++. They are not taught anymore. Now it's Python, for example. So the point now is artificial intelligence. Five years ago, AI was not there, uh, known in a, as a part of engineering education. So today, therefore, whatever you learn, whatever we learn, whatever you mentor to others is going to be obsolete in half a decade. So self-study we have to teach our mentors, if I have to use the word teach, rather we have to mentor them to self-study, learning to learn. And structured syllabus may be your starting point, never the end. Organic learning is the goal. I may be interested in, let's say, understanding, suppose I'm doing a master's in international relations. I'm interested in understanding South Asian issues much deeper. So if I'm asked to study Central Asia, I will study only what the syllabus wants. But if, when I come to South Asia, I do not want to stick to the syllabus. I want to go as deep as I can. That's organic learning. So you as then the, mentor, the, the learners today has to understand how to source content. EBSCO, Magro Hill Education, DelNet, Developing Library Network. These are the new age. I mean, they were there, but hardly were used. Now it's to be used much more. Then copy kitab, digital collection of 8 million books. Today's learner, just like the mentor, even beyond the mentor, has to be edtech, comtech, and internet savvy. And just now, I know thousands and thousands of young students or learners are actually helping their teachers or mentors to be more technology savvy. That's the reality. Even my first uh, email ID, which I don't use anymore, ukc64 at readyfmail.com, because everyone knew that I'm born in 1964. So I don't use it anymore. That was actually started by my students. He started and I was in symbiosis and he told, he asked me, what is the password? I'm like, you put your name. So he, he wrote Sampat Kumar. Now he is the, currently the associate editor of the Hindu newspaper. So Sampat Kumar gave his own name as the email ID is password and told me while going out from my cabin, please change the password in the night. Otherwise I'll check your mails every night. So that was the reason I changed my Password. I learned how to change my password. I didn't know about it. So EdTech, ComTech, Internet Savvy, the new age learners have to learn far more than what 20 years ago, 10 years ago, or even five years ago, the students needed. And study in a collaborative environment. I would like to tell to the teachers, I know you are all uh, mentors, teachers, professors. Unfortunately, we also compete unconsciously. Just now, my dear colleague, Dr. Navin Das, made a very beautiful um, you know, case for, for multidisciplinary learning. That was his case. And I was listening to it uh, and the examples he was giving. He's a man of engineering and management. He was giving examples from physics, from psychology, from several others. So that's the beauty. Now, if you don't compete, you see the beauty in others. If you compete, you are always suffering from either depression if the other person is smarter or arrogance if the other person is weak and if you don't compete if you are better you help others if you are weak you request others to help you and that thereby you actually win more friendships around you 
So study in a collaborative environment and more particularly in these times of pandemic and beyond pandemic collaboration is the order of the day. I just was shooting a, an episode a little earlier and the technicians were saying, sir, in this whole last one and a half years, we technicians have been working the most. I mean, yes, next to the doctors and the nurses. Undoubtedly, they were the people who were saving the society. And they were in a, working in a collaborative environment. You come into a studio and see. You go into a hospital and see. If every major aspect of life is collaborative, why do you ask the students to compete? Why do you compete with your colleagues? Why, do, why should we do that? And from our childhood, we are told to compete. That's a very wrong uh, premise. My, going ahead, as I said, we are no more teachers. We are mentors. Long live teaching. Teaching is dead. Long, now is the time of mentorship. And mentorship has four aspects to it. Creating learning resources and tools. Once upon a time, the learning resources were books and my lectures. Not anymore. So what are the new age learning resources? It's research best. And I'll come to that later. Delivering learning resources is not enough to create great content. It's more important to deliver it interestingly. Many a time you have very good content on the screen, but the person speaking is extremely boring, like me. Like me. So third, engaging the learners creatively. You need to know how to engage the learners creatively. It's not enough to give content. It's important to engage them. And evaluating the learners continuously, that's the big difference, continuously. Let's begin with first, creating learning resources and tools. The learning resources and tools, there will be two types. One, your own, two, aggregated. And your own requires a lot of technological content. So setting learning objectives and outcomes at the very outset, before you start any course, what are the learning objectives and the outcomes? And that's why we are now moving on to an outcome-based education across the country. And the new education policy also talks about it. Then mentor self videos. Now, I may look very uh, ugly, but I need to make my videos. I can't help it because that's the new age. That's the new age uh, you know, requirement. So the simplest thing to communicate about a subject, about a topic is the self video. Then mentors podcast. If I cannot uh, record a video and I'm a little shy that I don't look nice on screen, not presentable enough, then let me audio record my voice as podcast. Mentors case studies, the case studies that particularly at university level. Mentors slide presentation, the art presentations. Mentors personalized lab or studio content. The content which teaches technology, whether it's lab or studio, depending on the subject. Mentors written chapters, books and articles for higher level learning. Infographic, that's another skill that we have to pick up. We have to tell the stories through infographics through graphics, moving films. And you see there are doodle films and so many other things that have come up. All you need is just a couple of hours and knowing the software to produce it. So mentors on, own online courses. Many of us are doing it. I am doing one on integrated marketing communication and one on broadcast journalism, which will be a 35 hours, 34 hours course. Mentors diverse micro learning content, small stories, anecdotes, examples and building learner mentor networks and platforms like, like WhatsApp groups or any other you know, platforms on which you work. So these are the various things that you create, which are proprietary, proprietary means your own. Maybe your university or college has the right to it because um, you are paid salary by them. So they, they have the right to it. This is the proprietary for which you have to do research. And the research has to actually bring the topic in the simplest language and move to the toughest ones. Then you collect or curate content, YouTube, Vimeo, video, films, or audio, podcast, URLs of sites, analysis, and cases relevant to your topic, PDFs of chapters, slide share presentations, text in reference books. In case of higher education, text is very rare. Journal articles and chapters, Charts, infographics, relevant humor content. These are very significant. You must have some humor content. You must some humor content that can take you to the next level while making your presentation. Massive open online courses like MOOCs, like Swam. Paid online courses as we do in here in the university, Coursera or LinkedIn Learning. Procure 3D augmented and simulations content. 
how do you collect simulations content that's another search that you have to do aggregated diverse micro learning content the anecdotes that you collect from the internet the examples in the small cases which make it interesting there are a lot of stories associated with the cases that you do and then ebooks of national digital library through inflipnet the south asian archive or the world ebook library and many others so these are your aggregated sources now these aggregated sources all you may not get for every topic you may have four three or four proprietary and three or four aggregated and then you put them arrange them in order of increasing order of difficulty how do you deliver increasing order of difficulty the simplest one at the uh, at the top may be your own video and then you move to the next level the next level and then you go on the last few items the student the usual learners may not even watch it or read it that's for the organic learner there is a difference here if you are 10 items suppose someone is teaching integrated marketing communication and there are 10 items aggregated and placed the last four or three may be of so high quality that only those who are keen would go through it but the first six or seven would be for the structured syllabus guys the usual average guys and they also know it they will go from the simplest to the toughest creating interest level through the use of content to read listen and watch don't give only reading material watching or listening materials using learning management system to deliver content to learners software for creating distributing and managing educational content so you need to actually use lms to deliver content to learners and that's a software now flipped classroom approach for digital asynchronous learning a week or more in advance you have to give the content at least a week in advance i'll just join you in 30 seconds Is Vivek sir is joining us very shortly? Yes, sir, I'm back. Don't worry. I, I had just had to give one small instruction. We are in a studio actually. So, flipped classroom approach for digital asynchronous learning. Now, this is the biggest difference. Earlier, learning was synchronous. Today, asynchronous and synchronous are both important. To digital and physical, both important. So, synchronous before the synchronous learning happens. unfortunately the earlier education the teacher introduced the topic in a synchronous class today's requirement is that you actually share the matter much before the class in an asynchronous manner to be seen read and watched and thereafter the there is a great amount of learning happened already and then you come to the synchronous class with a live interaction that synchronous class can be digital and can be physical both then use whatsapp groups and e groups to amplify the content share more examples on the on the digital manner if there is a collaborative platform that the learner and the mentor is involved much more matter can be shared seamless integration with an online platform obviously zoom ms teams we use ms teams just now we are on zoom you know some people use google meet or webex or whatever interactive there are interactive learning technology like impartus where interactive smart classes or smart interactions can be done and keep engaging content for organic learning so some learners if there are 40 people in the class and five or six will be there who are interested in the topic beyond the syllabus and help them with their organic learning so this is the delivery of the learning resources that one has to do moving ahead engagement it's not enough to deliver it's much more important to engage so integrating social networking in a learning environment can you really do that some teachers some mentors across the country are doing using so they are creating the batch has 40 students and there are five mentors so 45 people in one close group on the facebook and they on the wall of that close group they are writing all that they want to share from assignment to simulated situation to assign tasks to reports to powerpoints to anything can be done so instagram through pictures and stories linkedin learning so you actually can use social networking for learning then use google forms an opinion service beyond during and beyond the classes we give i'm sure this session also has a feedback form it's very significant that we exercise or you execute the feedback form during the session itself poll and quiz during and beyond synchronous sessions synchronous sessions going beyond poll and quiz debates and discussions digital and physical 
these are the ways to engage tomorrow less teaching more demonstrating less mentoring more engaging online breakout sessions do you know this zoom has an online breakout session you are at this point 296 people here so we can create six groups of 50 people each and give a topic to each group to have a discussion for one hour or two hours and come back in the common group to give report that's how engagement should be done offline peer group tasks obviously virtual lab and studio experiences now today you can actually create lab and studio through video and deliver it virtually synchronous or asynchronous whatever and then you come to the actual lab and studio 70% of the lab work is done virtually only the last 30% can be done actually or in physical or face to face field visits and report presentations this is another way of engaging thematic and syllabus based or case study presentations presentation should be the order of the day and i i sincerely believe mentor of tomorrow will not speak more than half the time or even less of the time of the synchronous sessions more than 50% of the time the learners must be speaking unfortunately that's not what we are doing now engagement to be enhanced through video conferencing tools and through instant messaging we are already doing that along with educational apps like google classroom or cisco or go to meeting or ms teams so these are the various ways of engaging the learner physically and digitally how do you enhance the experience now these are some of the things which require more investment artificial intelligence or machine learning used to get insights about the learners so you can actually apply artificial intelligence to understand which are the topics that interest every learner there their behavior their study pattern the consumption of content they are the interested more when they understand more when their videos or on their audios uh, being given even what exactly or if i explain through graphics personalizing the learning experience by using smart books tata macro and peers is doing that ai bots uh, to monitor the learner's academic performance proper examinations even attendance selecting electives all these also ai can uh, can tell and suggest what about dictation is studying the pattern and suggesting and the person is i have augmented reality are also helping track learners engagement with the study material we also know that certain study materials actually engage more the learner this can be understood understood by the use of virtual and augmented reality tracking cognitive behavior and social data of learners and social listening we do not consider the social media presence of the learners as important but that's too critical and there are social listening tools which will tell us what interests each one audio video graphics humor utility utilize audio video graphics and humor components given for organic learning learning to learn and gamification of learning via an ai application now these are a bit advanced areas which enhance the experience of the learner this is not available at every institute but i want to say that learn essential delivery and creating content is a must and another more research is required by the business and the last one what which is also the evaluation and research based evaluation there has to we were doing largely summative evaluation earlier summative evaluation you know end of the course today formative evaluation is equally or more important than summative and diagnostic quizzes quizzes which help us to do research on the problems of the weaknesses of the learners then create a civil online exams open been applied and analyzed for which the non googleable questioning has to be there you you know the questioning which can be googled or copied then there will not be a flexible online exams and this sort of questioning or this sort of examination or assessment in fact i am not in favor of the word or examination is much just like i cannot do one student but but learner tt not teacher but but mentor not examination but evaluation the evaluation is to support examination is to denounce ignorance evaluation is to support learning so so just to be positive word support so non google evaluation is to be done then there are proctored online exam you sitting at your home or college can actually do it into the examination of which is being done online from homes by the students by the learners because the video and the video being open and there are other proctored softwares as well 
field based assignment and report marking on them research based assignment and presentation case study presentation syllabus presentation in my opinion all of this should have which we always do this evaluation and whether we want to enhance their experience whether we want to engage the learner whether we want to deliver the learning in a concrete manner whether we want to do research and curate learning from multiple resources whether we want to create our own learning resources proprietary resources for the learners so this being the new age domain of the mentors research and mentoring are intricately involved or in uh, or rather in a way what should i say intricately engaged are asking i would request that i am sending it to prathina ma'am uh, by email just now and uh, because she has invited me it is on her yes, to share sir. with you Definitely. bye bye thank, thank you sir thank you very much sir uh, okay so last but not the least uh, i would like to invite now uh, dr pratita vishwas ma'am pratita ji yes i am here yeah, yeah for uh, delivering the vote of thanks finally and uh, you know uh, just to <laughs> say a few words before that pratita ma'am has been uh, you know it's, it's like the background of everything so the entire thing we were actually running at the uh, fore end but at the back end it was all uh dr prasita vishwas who actually arranged and organized all these things together and have been coordinating so thank you very much and please uh, over to you prasita ji for delivering the vote of thanks yeah thank you so much uh, shubhona it was a really a uh, lovely workshop i must say and uh, of course with the active cooperation and support of all uh, of the important in persons and dignitaries of adamas university uh, so we are standing at the very end of the session at first i would like to thank professor tomitre chancellor of adamas university dr dipendra kumar jha vice chancellor of adamas university so, so our validatory session theme was innovation perspectives for 21st uh, research uh, so perspectives for the 21st century research such was very much deliberated according to the order i am thanking uh, professor dr pranav krishna chandra ex registrar wbutt epa mm shamim senior lecturer department of english southeastern university of sri lanka professor uh, dr moumita mukherji dean research and development affairs a very uh, a, a great thanks to professor dr navin das pro vice chancellor academic affairs and dean school of business and economics adamas university and to professor ujjal k choudhury sir professor uh, pro vice chancellor public relation and media affairs uh, because i know that they both are very busy today along with professor dr jitendra pande Uh, pro vice chancellor research and development affairs and dean sobas but still uh, both of them managed to come and uh, gave their deliberation and their presentation so i am specially thanking professor dr navin das and uh, professor uttar choudhury sir and at the same time uh, without their continuous support this workshop wouldn't have been possible titled that interdisciplinary applications and innovations in research methodology a special thanks to professor dr momita mukherjee ma dean research and development affairs uh, for always continuously helping guiding and motivating us and the team we are thankful also to the members of iic adamas university especially uh, dr shaktushree chatterjee associate professor and uh, of course head uh, or the associate director of the incubation cell of adamas university for his continuous support and to make this program a grand success my heartiest thanks to the international advisory committee members and the organizing committee members of this workshop 
I would also like to specially thank uh, someone who has silently and uh, very much uh, guided me in the background uh, with me. Uh, and I would definitely uh, take her name. She is uh, Dr. Shaudi Mukherjee, Director of School of Education and Dean Student Affairs, Adamas University, for a continuous uh, assistance and support uh, because I come uh, from School of Education. And of course, uh, I was uh, very much encouraged to uh, do this wholeheartedly in a proper manner. And my heartiest thanks also to Dr. Shumana Dutta, Assistant Officer and Head of the Department, Department of Psychology, uh, and the moderator, one of the main moderator of this workshop, one of the important team member for the Center for Education, Research and Development, because for our continuous help, uh, guidance, it wouldn't have been possible for me to do it singly. And uh, also would like to thank uh, another moderator, uh, Mr. Shayok Pal of the School of Media and uh, Communication, he is an assistant professor. And also to the team of CERD, like uh, Center for uh, Education, Research and Development, in short, CERD, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude uh, for the wonderful speeches and insights of all the speakers of over the five days on interdisciplinary teaching and learning and uh, my wholehearted gratitude to all the participants for their constant support and assistance. I would also uh, like to thank all those who are involved in the technical team as well as uh, in the creative team, uh, like uh, Mr. Chandrashil Tiwari, uh, Mr. Orko Chatterjee, Mr. Ranabrata Chandro for making this in the background, a huge success, uh, the Facebook Live, etc. And uh, uh, of course, uh, to the International Relations Department, headed by Dr. Podimol Biswas, and of course, uh, uh, Mr. Rajat Shubra Roy, Assistant Director of the International Relations Department, and Mr. Shubhayan Bhattacharya. And they have also uh, guided and supported me. And also with uh, this, I would like to thank the collaborators of University Uttara Malaysia and uh, Forum, Forum for Interdisciplinary Research Methods. Without them, uh, this collaboration wouldn't have been su uh, successful. And of course, with the help of IIC, Adamas University, that is also a constant support. So we look forward, we along with the team, which comprises at present live myself and Dr. Shumana Datta, we look forward to such enriching initiatives and exchanges of ideas and visions in the near future. Here we are ending this uh, uh, week long workshop on the interdisciplinary applications and as well as innovative approaches in research methodology. And we hope that you had had a, a great time in this process. And we, uh, we will be, of course, organizing such uh, webinars uh, so that we will be able to uh, have a highlight or we will be able to give you an insight of this uh, context. Now, Sumanana, uh, I am sharing uh, to you uh, the, the feedback link, right? So if you can uh, kindly uh, share with uh, the students, somehow my chat has become disabled, right? So I think that it would be better that uh, from your end, just a, just a moment, okay. So I have shared the feedback link with you. If it is possible, yes. just see that. Yes, just a moment, I'm sharing. Okay, so now it has come back suddenly. Okay. So it has come back, right? So uh, I have shared the link. Uh, please, you all. Uh, fill in this because we will be able to generate a certificate out of this uh, so that uh, we will be able to give you that certificate also. So
so uh, from the organizing team uh, members uh, the of the center for education research and development we are uh, ending the session and thanks to all of you for your uh, continuous as uh, help guidance support it wouldn't have been uh, possible without the participants and telling again and again even in the tuesday afternoon we are having close to 300 participants so it is quite a, a great number even in this webinar or workshop session where most of the workshops are happening uh, so from my side i thank uh, all of you uh, thanks also to sumana ma'am for her uh, nice moderation nice deliberation and thank you ladies uh, i also yeah. i would like to thank all the participants for being so very interactive across the all the situation all the uh, you know sessions which we had all of them have been so very interactive and uh, you know really uh, very interactive participants we had and it's uh, really a pleasure so thank you all uh, thank you again yeah so thanks so with that we will be closing the session uh, thank you everyone one and uh, we will be sending the uh, professor uh, ujjal sir's uh, uh, presentation through the mail uh, we have already we will be having your feedback uh, link and in that your mail will be recorded so sir is uh, very liberal and sir always shares his ideas and innovations so sir will be definitely sir has already i think shared with me so i will be sharing with you all okay so thanks to all of you and with that uh, we are ending the session thank you so much bye bye all